the Tyrol, a picturesque federal state in the west of Austria, one of the most beautiful areas in Europe, and set within the magnificent Alps. Here there are many ancient towns, monasteries and fortresses that highlight the region's history. A history of a proud and hardy mountain people. Our journey begins in the Unterland in the city of Kitzbühel. It was once a prosperous mining town. But today it is a world famous ski resort that is also popular in the summer months. The old town, with its pretty middle-class buildings that date back to the 15th century, is a fine example of the country's rural architecture. It was then that Kitzbühel was part of the Tyrol. One of the most important settlements of the late Middle Ages has successfully managed to step into the third millennium. St. Johann in Tyrol is one of the most well-known tourist destinations in the Unterland. And it has a splendid town center. The Tyrol has developed into a veritable trademark Tyrol. And behind the picture book Idyll are the local people who are proud of their unique culture and national identity. On our journey to Lower Intal, we pass Going, a popular village with a Baroque church. And in the background, the Wilde Kaiser Mountains. At the time of the Contra Revolution, the Protestant population was driven out of the Tyrol without mercy. Thus, the region was known as the Tyrol Holy Land. The next village is Elmau, from where a modern rack railway travels up the Hartkaiser mountain. A high alpine paradise for both hikers and skiers. From here, there's a marvelous view across the Kaiser mountains. Two parallel mountain ranges the Zama Kaiser in the north and the Wilde Kaiser in the south. The region's myths and legends feature devils, witches and souls of the dead that inhabit mountain peaks, pastures and canyons. Next we arrive in Untera Intal. Kufstein Fortress surveys the town of the same name, a small town that lies on the Inn River a place of which many songs have been written. For some centuries, this border town was the cause of some hostility between Bavaria and the Tyrol. And the fortress has seen many a bloody battle from foreign foe. However, it always won through and was never captured. A mighty bulwark in the Alps and an historic gateway into the high mountains. A savage fire once devastated both town and fortress and made it easy for the Bavarians to take control of this area. Thus, Kufstein was part of Bavaria until 1814, when it reverted to the Tyrol. The Follenhof Ebb Stud at the foot of the Kaiser Mountains is the official location of the Tyrol Horse Breeding Union. This is where the famous Haflinger horses are bred. Around 4,000 people live in the village of Wildschenau that is situated in a fascinating valley of the Kitzbühler Alps that extend for some 24 kilometers. Niederau is the entrance to the Wildschenau region. Oberau is the main village in the valley. It features eye-catching farmhouses whose carved wooden balconies are decorated with splendid flowers. At the end of the valley is Aufach. From here, a modern cable car travels up the Schatzberg in two sections. 
Once only a narrow canyon led to the end of the valley, and the mountain had to be negotiated on foot. Today, those who come here appreciate this isolated mountain world. They travel from peak to peak. Squeezed in between the Inn River and protective rocks is the small town of Rattenberg that has maintained its medieval character. Its obvious prosperity was based upon highly lucrative silver and copper mining, as well as the fascinating art of glass blowing, which is still practiced today. This charming lane is richly evocative of bygone times. And these fine, sturdy buildings that are decorated with marble from the surrounding area have many a story to tell. The town's buildings are tightly packed together and nestle close to the rock walls. Opposite Rattenberg, on the other side of the Unteran Intal, is the largest open-air museum in the west of Austria, the Tiroler Bauernhofer. It features 13 farmhouses and numerous buildings from various regions of the Tyrol. The buildings are of authentic design and provide an interesting insight into the rural life of times gone by. The original buildings were painstakingly dismantled and each detail added to these authentic buildings. But it was a rewarding task. Further west of the Intal, the Alpbach Tal leads into an untouched natural landscape. At an altitude of 975 meters above sea level is the remote mountain village of Alpbach. This, the most beautiful village in the Tyrol, has maintained its traditional character. In just 45 minutes, the Aachen Seebahn travels from Jenbach in the Intal up to the Aachen Sea, the biggest lake in the Tyrol. The oldest rack railway in the world was inaugurated here in 1889. Over a distance of seven kilometers, the train travels to an altitude of 440 meters. It crawls up the 16 in one gradient several times a day. When the old engine finally arrives at the nine kilometer long and one kilometer wide Arkansas, its water tank must be refilled. The boats on this Tyrolean fjord are waiting for their passengers. The water temperature highlights the fact that the Arkansas originated during the Ice Age. The return journey to the valley is an even bigger challenge for the old Rack Railway. And the conductor has an extra task. He must apply the brakes in the last carriage. The Zilletal, opposite the Arkansas, is the most popular and best known holiday region in the Tyrol. A wide valley that ends in Meierhofen. The Zilletaler Hohenstrasse is one of the most beautiful high mountain roads in Austria. The views from here are breathtaking. Peaks of 3,000 meters and more dominate the silhouette of the Alps and are partially covered by gleaming white glaciers. A special attraction is the journey from Meierhofen up into the tiny Zamsertal, into an enchanting mountain landscape, and to the imposing Schlegeis water reservoirs. Here, man has managed to unite nature and technology in a wonderful way. The artificial dam blends perfectly into the natural scenery. The Tuxetal is the natural follow-on to the Zilletal. It's located higher and it's narrower. 
and situated at the end of the valley, Hintertux was once described as the end of the world. The harsh terrain once made it difficult to settle in the valleys of the Alps. But today it is a paradise for skiers as the Hintertuxa glaciers have now been made accessible for skiing. In the Intal, we are now approaching the capital of the Tyrol. But first we visit a small town that became important long before Innsbruck reached prominence. Hall, a medieval town whose old town is one of the best preserved in the whole of Europe. In 1477, Duke Sigmund moved the mint from Miran to Hall. And it was here that the world's first large silver coin was minted. Soon the Haller Silbertaler became common currency throughout Europe and made the town famous. So the idea of the Euro is not totally new. At the junction of the Unterintal and Oberintal is the Tyrol's metropolis of Innsbruck, the Florence of the North and the capital of the mountains. The Golden Dattel is the city's main landmark, a splendid stone balcony with a slanting roof whose copper tiles shine out in the sunlight and from which it derived its name. The balcony is decorated with many frescoes and reliefs and once served as a lodge for the regent from where he could observe the jousting contests that took place in the square below. Emperor Maximilian I temporarily made Innsbruck the center of the Habsburger realm. After his death, power reverted to Vienna. Margot of Maltasch gave the land of Tyrol to the Habsburgers, who ruled there until the decline of the Danube monarchy. In 1420, the Habsburgers moved their residence from Meran to Innsbruck. The Hofburg was built and gradually enlarged. Its Baroque design was created by Empress Maria Theresa. The nearby St. Jakob Cathedral is one of the Tyrol's most important buildings of Baroque design. Its interior is crowned by a splendid cupola decorated with illusionist frescoes and the splendid Renaissance tomb of Erzherzog Maximilian is located in the center of the cathedral and is a reminder of the tombs that are too to be found in the Hofkirche. The Hofkirche was completed under the rule of Ferdinand I and has a modest and understated exterior. But it contains the city's most important historic site. The Hofkirche was originally planned as a tomb for Emperor Maximilian I. Black figures guard a kenotaph, an empty sarcophagus, because Emperor Maximilian was buried in the Wiener Neustadt and his heart in Ghent. A Tyrolean monarch had this pleasure palace directly outside the city gates, the Schloss Ambras. It was constructed on the foundation of a medieval fortress and had a fine park and all the splendid furnishings of Renaissance times. Far from the noise of the city, a rack railway travels up the Nordketter to Hungerberg and from there a cable car leads higher. There is no other city in the world that has such a mountain world on its doorstep. Innsbruck is situated in the very heart of the mountains. Close to Hungerberg is the highest zoo in Europe, the scenic Alpen Zoo, that mainly features indigenous wildlife. From here we begin our journey through the Tyrol Oberland. On a plateau high above the Intal and in front of the mighty Carvendel Mountains is Seefeld. In the 13th century, the monarch of the Tyrol, Meinhard II, brought a number of Cistercian monks into the country and permitted them to establish the Stams Monastery. 
This was to commemorate his son Konradin, who at the age of 16 was executed in Nepal. Colorful stucco work and frescoes with religious motifs adorn the ceilings and walls. And until the 16th century, the Fürstengruft of the Abbey served as a tomb for the monarchs of the Tyrol. On the opposite side of the Intal is a sunny high valley that extends along the Miminger Bergkette. The Miminger Plateau is an oasis of relaxation. The journey north leads across the Fern Pass to Erchwald, a romantic tourist destination close to the German border, at the foot of the Zugspitze and protected by the Wettestein Mountains. There was once a Roman route here, and for many years Ausserfern was a much sought after destination. But the construction here of the first cable car in the Tyrol changed everything. With the advent of tourism, everyone wanted to enjoy the fascinating mountain scenery. But without the arduous climb once undertaken by Josef Nass. The imposing mountain station at the top of the Zugspitze, with an hotel, a panoramic restaurant and a meteorological station, can today also be reached from the German side. At a length of 65 kilometers, the Erztal, which is named after the main town of Erz, is the longest valley in the Inntal. The small village of Umhausen contains the Erzidorf, and deeper in the valley is the winter resort of Solden, that has much to offer and is extremely popular with skiers. Obersolden is situated on a slope that is much higher than Solden. Once there were only a few farmhouses here, but today it has several modern hotels. The valley becomes narrower and finally ascends into the breathtaking region of the Erztaler Alps. The Erztal became world famous due to the discovery of a mummy the man in the ice, who was known as Ötzi, and who perished in the high Alps. The valley climbs even higher, and Obergurgel, at the end of the valley, is situated at an altitude of 1,900 meters. The vegetation changes, and the climate is high alpine. Higher still is Hochgurgel, a small hotel resort that was built for the tourist trade. From the Erztal, a high mountain road leads to the foot of the Rettenbach Fenner, a glacial area that covers 2,800 meters. This high mountain region is now totally accessible, and so it's possible to enjoy winter sports even at the height of summer. Kutai is in the Stubaya Alps. It can be reached from the Erztal via the Selrheintal that travels at an altitude of around 2,000 meters parallel to the Inntal. Throughout history, the people of the Tyrol have always been a wild mountain race and proud that they have never attacked, only defended. Kutai is located at an altitude of 2,020 meters. In summer, it's popular with hikers, and in winter, it's perfect for alpine holidays. Fresh air, clear water, and a healthy climate, plus a magnificent mountain landscape. A place that refreshes both mind and body, and also the local sheep. As with the Erztal, the Kaunertal is also a valley of the Upper Intal. Towards the end of the valley is Gepach Reservoir that is almost six kilometers long, with the 3,739 meter high Weisskugel mountain in the background.
On a slope close to the entrance to the valley is a small chapel. The Pilgrim Church of Kaltenbrunn is the oldest in the Tyrol. It dates back to the 12th century and was later given a Baroque design. The inhabitants of the small mountain villages are very religious. They live alongside nature and have a strong faith. A content life full of tradition. The high plateau on the opposite side is known as the Sun Plateau, as this area enjoys more sunshine than anywhere else in the Tyrol. Of three villages in this area, Surfos is the main one. At an altitude of 1,427 meters and situated amid picturesque mountain scenery, Fis is one of three sunshine villages. Despite the comforts of modern hotels, Reto Romanic traces are to be found everywhere. Rural character is underlined by the local architecture. Its originality adds to the special charm of the villages. Historic origins with a modern touch. A successful experiment. Laudeg Castle rises above the third village of Ladis, which is off the tourist trail. Further into the west, near Landek, the Intal branches off in a southerly direction. And the narrow Stanzatal leads to the Alberg. Close to the entrance to the valley is the mountain village of Grinz. In pre-Roman times, the people here appreciated the temperate climate and settled on the sunny terraces at the foot of the Passaia Spitze. It's believed that vines once grew here. Grinz features the original Old Tyrol. A proud land of free farmers to whom Emperor Maximilian I gave the right to defend their land. Patsnan is the name of a high alpine valley in the west. In the upper Patsnan Tal is Ischgl, that is located at an altitude of 1400 meters above sea level. This former agricultural village has now developed into a chic winter sports resort. The old village and its splendid church have been skillfully integrated into the planning of new buildings and the result is an interesting mixture of architectural styles. The large number of palace-like hotels indicates the popularity of this place. This Ibiza in the mountains has developed into the place to be. At the end of the valley, and at an altitude of 1,500 meters, is the small village of Galtur, at the foot of the striking Silvretta Massif, a more tranquil spot. In the winter of 1999, this idyllic winter resort was the scene of a major tragedy and made headline news around the world. Devastating dust avalanches killed 38 people and most of the buildings were destroyed. St. Anton lies at the foot of the Alberg at an altitude of 1300 meters above sea level. Full of history, it was once a farming village. In 1824, the pass was opened. And in 1884, a railway tunnel. Followed in 1978 by the Alberg Tunnel. The Alberg is situated at the end of the Tyrol. St. Christoph lies close to the pass. Since the Middle Ages, there's been an inn here that has sheltered travelers on their dangerous journey across the mountain. The precarious road that leads to Tsurs was constructed in 1900. In summer, everything here is relaxed and calm, but in winter, it's a luxurious holiday resort. 300 meters further on is Lech, the most famous village in the Alberg region. Tourism gradually developed and brought the mountain regions a different kind of wealth. Cable cars and mountain lifts were built and visitors arrived in their thousands. 
each season of the year, this popular alpine holiday region attracts visitors from all over the world. The Tyrol is a land of mountains, a natural treasure in the very heart of Europe. <laughs>